Hey, y'all. Okay, I don't know if y'all are aware yet, but uh, they were looking for an 11th suspect uh, connected to Junior's death. Um, they had already had 10 in custody. Okay, but then they had put out a video um, from the surveillance showing another person outside of a vehicle, you know, getting in and out the car and stuff like that. Um, and they were looking for him. Well, now this guy has actually turned himself in to the police. Okay, and let's see, this article was posted yesterday. It was updated last night. Um, I'll play this video in just a second. It shows that there was a vigil held after the guy got arrested. Okay. It says, an 11th suspect wanted in connection with the killing of 15-year-old Lissandro Jr. Guzman Feliz outside of Bronx Bodega has turned himself in to the police on Friday. Danilo Payams Pacheco, 21, of the Bronx, surrendered to officers at the 48th precinct accompanied by his lawyer. He faces charges of murder, manslaughter, gang assault, and criminal possession of a weapon. Pacheco allegedly was part of the foot chase that pursued a terrified Guzman Feliz for blocks. After a convoy of four vehicles carrying alleged Trinitarios gang members went looking for rivals the night of June 20th, a source told PIX11 that Guzman Feliz became scared when he saw the posse in the cars and started running. That's when they gave chase. The teen literally ran out of his sandals as he raced down 3rd Avenue and then turned down East 130. 183rd Street, dodging into the bodega located at Bathgate Avenue in East 183rd. The bodega is very close to his home. Disturbing surveillance footage from inside the bodega re revealed Guzman Feliz desperately jumped over the counter seeking a haven from his pursuers. A group of men stormed into the store and pulled the teen out from behind the counter after punching him repeatedly before dragging him out to the sidewalk where he was stabbed with knives and a machete. The teen re received a lethal stab wound to his neck, stumbled back into the bodega, and slumped over the counter. He was told to go to nearby St. Barnabas Hospital for help and took off running. He collapsed on the sidewalk and bled to death outside the hospital. The latest suspect to come under arrest who was the subject of a surveillance image released by detectives earlier this week, didn't enter the bodega where Guzman Feliz was attacked, but he was seen near the rear passenger side of the white Acura parked at the scene, pacing from one side to the other, until other suspects run toward the sidewalk outside the bodega when the 15-year-old was pulled outside. The suspect is seen jumping into the white Acura after Guzman Feliz was stabbed with knives and a machete. As other men jumped into the vehicles involved in the crime, investigators have recovered two vehicles involved in the killing, a white Acura and a black Dodge that belongs to murder suspect Kelvin Alvarez. A law enforcement source told PIX11 News that investigators are looking for one more man in connection with the killing that sparked widespread community widespread community outrage, cause of junior, justice for Junior, and demands to end gang violence. That last individual was seen in a gray Honda, though investigators have not released more information about the vehicle. In addition to Pacheco, these individuals, all accused members of the Trinitarios gang, are in custody in connection with Guzman Feliz murder. Okay, so y'all hear that, right? They said they're listening, they're looking for one more person okay i thought that i was hoping this was the last one wow they're looking for one more okay and this right here shows all the people that were um arrested in connection with that danelle fernandez 21 jose muniz 21 manuel rivera 18 santiago rodriguez 24 kelvin alvarez 19 Elvin Garcia, 23, Joniki Martinez, 24, Jose Tavares, 21, Diego Suero, 29, and Gabriel Ramirez Concepcion, 26. The gang has been linked repeatedly 
to narcotics traffic, trafficking and federal prosecutors indicted dozens of gang members in racketeering cases earlier this decade. Members of the Trinitarios gang were also blamed for the June 18th attack on a 14-year-old boy in the Bronx. Two days before Guzman Feliz was killed, gang members chased another teen, this time onto the Bronx River Parkway median where they repeatedly beat and stabbed the boy who underwent emergency surgery and lost a kidney. Police said the case and the killing of Guzman Feliz are linked. Guzman Feliz's mother said he had wanted to be a police detective since he was five years old. The slain teen was a member of the NYPD Explorers program for youth interested in a career in law enforcement. In an op-ed published in the New York Daily News, NYPD Commissioner James O'Neill said Guzman Feliz's death was like losing a family member that we didn't even know we had. I believe that's it. Yep. Okay. But here, let's. Here, we'll look at this one right here, too. Because I guess she's going to talk about this arrest on this guy. Oh. Okay, well, for some reason that can't be played. But see, this is the guy right here. Okay, this was the image that they had of him getting out the car and he was walking around the car. It just still breaks my heart. It's just so sad. So heartbreaking. Good evening, Corey. After the 11 suspect was a ring this evening, a vigil, another vigil was held here outside the bodega where Junior Guzman Feliz was killed. And uh, this area here has become a symbolic gathering point. His murder has so outraged this community. They have come together to call for justice for Junior, even as uh, the latest suspect's defense, defense attorney says police have got it all wrong. As the memorial continues to grow in honor of a young man many didn't even know, his neighbors and family held another vigil tonight. Junior's heartbroken mother, who has been a pillar of strength, reacting to the news of today's latest arrest. That's not going to bring back my son, you know, but uh, the justice has to be placed here in the, in the Havens too. The brutality and callous nature of this crime has outraged an entire city. 15-year-old Lasandra Jr. Guzman Feliz dragged out of a bodega and attacked with machetes in a case of mistaken identity. Police say the culprits are members of the vicious Trinitarios gang. Cops arresting an 11th person today. Mere presence at the scene of a crime is not enough to convict. Just hours before tonight's rally, 21-year-old Danilo Payam Pacheco turned himself into police. He went before the judge for his arraignment and was remanded without bail. His defense attorney with strong words about the legal system. Isn't it ridiculous that if someone voluntarily surrenders that they can't get bail, he's not guilty. And uh, we're going to fight this case vigorously. And at the end of the day, we, uh, we're praying for justice. Police 11 obtained this exclusive video that police confirmed shows Pacheco pacing behind the white Acura outside the bodega. After Junior is stabbed repeatedly, you see people running into the white car and taking off in other vehicles as well. But Pacheco's mother says her son is not a gang member, only knew one person there that night and was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Outside of court this evening, she firmly defends her son. And he was charged with murder, manslaughter, gang assault, and also weapons charges. And sources are telling PIX11 that police are looking for one other suspect. He will be the 12th person. We're live in the Belmont section of the Bronx tonight. Shirley Chan, PIX11 News. That's crazy. That's a lot, a lot of people... That is so many people uh, to be involved in 
the death of one person. You know, okay, you got to think, even if they had not had those weapons with him, with them, you know, the knives and the machetes and stuff, what would this one person have? Like, what defense would they have against 12 people? You know, really, in all honesty. I mean, you'd have to have some kind of superpowers to be able to fight off that many people. You know, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't, under, I'll never understand the violence. I will never understand the gang activity because it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, and this boy, this man that got arrested this last time, the 11th person, Daniel, I, yeah, his mom says he's not in a gang. He was at the wrong place, wrong time, blah, blah, blah. But, dude, you're, you're running around with, you're running around with gang members, okay? You knew what they were doing. You helped them chase the boy. So wouldn't you be an accomplice with that? Common sense. You didn't have to physically do anything to him, and you, didn't, you don't have to physically be in the gang. It don't matter. You were hanging around with those gang members. You're guilty by association, and you're still... You still, a cut. You were take. You were partaking in the in the crime. He helped chase this boy. So by you helping, you're guilty, and that that's usually how it goes in the court of law. And his lawyer or whoever was saying, "Oh well, isn't that crazy that someone turning themselves in?" voluntarily can't get bail yeah because his lawyer told him to go turn himself in and he would get bailed out that's the only reason why he turned himself in i'm sure is because he was advised to by his lawyer now his lawyer is upset because he couldn't stick to his word you know it's just ridiculous no he shouldn't get bail they just all took part in in this young man's murder this young, intelligent boy who had dreams for his future. And now all of that is gone because of them. None of them should be able to get out at all. It doesn't matter whether it's for a couple weeks, couple months. They should never see the light of day again. And I can't wait to see what happens when they go to court because I really hope and pray to God that this judge sticks it to them like he's never done it to any other criminal. I mean, this is absolutely just sickening to me. You know, it was one thing when you had, you know, multiple people, a few people going to jail, but dang, now they're, now they're looking for a 12th person, 12th person. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's an insane number for one person. And it is just, it really, really, y'all, this has really just gotten under my skin so bad because when I see that video, all I can think of is my own son, my own child, who is very close in age to junior you know they're both tall they're both slim like i i just i i i can't help but put myself in this mother's shoes and i give i i i commend this mother so much because junior's mother is like an angel this woman like, she's not, I mean, she wants, oh, she wants justice for her son, but she's not, you know, approaching this with rage. She's not approaching this with, oh, I want them to die. Like, she's not doing any of that. And you know what? I, I give this woman just so much respect because I can't say, I know that I would not, oh, I'm so sorry about that. I know that I 
myself, I wouldn't be the same way. I, I would not be the same way. I would be, I would want them to feel everything that my son felt. I would want them to feel the, the fear and the pain. I would want them to feel the exact same way that he did. You know, so for this mother to be as godly as she is, I, I give her my utmost respect because it takes a lot for a parent to be like that, you know, and it just, it amazes me, you know, with her strength and her love that she has, you know, to to be able to feel like that. And, um, yeah, so I just wanted to show y'all this and talk to y'all about it a little bit. Leave your comments and feedback below. If y'all want to send me anything, you can do so on my email or you can add me on Facebook and send whatever you like through Messenger. So thank you for listening and I love y'all. And until, I don't know, later on today, I'll be talking to y'all later. Have a good day.